I've been teaching for a long time, and for that over that over that period of time, I've taught people. I've been teaching for a long time, and over that period of time, I've been teaching the cage system. So I learned this. I stopped using it. I stopped teaching it. Let's dive in. So this is called Notes on the Axe for a reason. We're learning all the notes on the axe. Um, not, you know, this kind of axe, that kind of axe, this kind of axe. Um, so it will be tedious and frustrating at times, but there's ways to get around that. There's diagrams, I never use them. I went the hard route. Um, and then you can just, you know, figure it out yourself, which is the way I recommend. Um, but it will change the way you look at the guitar. It will open up the fretboard to you immensely. It will make learning easier, composing easier, and all around it will make you a better musician. Um, I've had well-seasoned musicians um, come up to me and ask me, you know, at gigs or, you know, whatever, and ask me, how do you approach the fretboard? And, you know, it's, the easy answer is I know all my notes. I know all my chords. I know all my triads and their inversions. I know all my scales and where to play them um, and modes and all that fun stuff. And this is the foundation as to how I learned how to do all that. Um, this approach will open up the fretboard visually and musically. You'll be able to see it horizontally, vertically, and you know, like fractals. Not that kind of fractal, this kind of fractal. Um, later on, we'll dive into some basic theory and how to train yourself to you know, see that theory and hear that theory. Um, it's basic concept. And we can build on that further and further as you go along. Um, it will help you, the theory and this will help you um, build a foundation for triads, seventh chords, inversions of previous mentioned scales and modes. For now the theory, all you need to know is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. That's it. Whole step, half step. That's all you really need to know. Um, circle fifths, which, you know, you can find diagrams of that and if you don't know what the circle fifths is, contact me and I'll get it for you or it's right there uh, circle force which is counterclockwise to the circle of fifths so circle fifths goes clockwise circle force goes counterclockwise um, and then and harmonic spelling so you know if a and then a sharp a sharp can also be called b flat you have c sharp which is also d flat it just depends on what key signature you're in and then if you're going you know, your ear and brain will say you know, if you're going down, D flat. If you're going up, C sharp. It's just kind of the way, it's the best way to approach it. This will also help with ear training because you'll be hearing the note and saying the note. So your brain will connect it with the tactile, visual, and audio learning. Three best ways to learn. Um, and then the dreaded singing and playing or talking and playing and communicating while playing because all those are... So phase one is one note at a time. We're gonna focus one note per one string. So for instance, the low E, we're gonna start off on C. Then we're gonna find the next C. So there's easy ways to do this. You can either look at a diagram or you can figure out the hard way. The hard way is a better way because it'll help you learn and harmonic spelling and it'll help you learn the whole, whole hat. So E to F is half step, because there's only one half step between E and F. So E, F, right? And then there's a whole step between F and G. Whole step. And then, but, can't forget, E, F, F sharp, or G flat, then G, then there's a whole step from G to A, so G, G sharp, A, then there's a whole step from A to B, A, A sharp, B, and then your other holes are half step to C from B, B, C. So that's where your C is, right? We all know that this is E, right? And this is E, and this is E, and this is E. So, you know, go with what you know. 
So then, best way to visualize it is you have your C here, right? So we're repeating E here, then F, G, A, B, C, right? So that's our next C. You done good. Now, you have to do that in a mechanical manner. You can't just be like, okay, yeah, there's a C, and you know, there's a C here, and then you know, right there and there. No, it's not a good way to practice it. You want to get out your metronome, the dreaded metronome. Get mine. My metronome, I have numerous ones, but my favorite, because it goes with me everywhere, is this one. My uh, percussion instructor uh, gave me this, or told me, to use this one uh, because there's a lot of things I can do with you know, automator and stuff like that. But we're gonna start slow and steady, 40 beats per minute. Right, simple. Now the trick is for this is not to go, right? We don't wanna do that. What we wanna do is C the next note, C, 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 and then jump, but not like that. You want to, right? So this will help with the hand-eye coordination as well. Um, you know, say if you're moving around fast, you got to hit all these crazy notes or chords or whatever. It's going to help with that too. So back at it. Feel the beat. Don't tap your foot. Don't bob your head. Don't count it out or anything. Get a feel for it here in your gut. Internalize the beat. You know, C, 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 right? C, C. Now when we're doing this, C, C, we are training our eyes, ears, and hands what C looks like and sounds like, right? Now we're gonna go in the circle of force. F, right? But we're not gonna do that yet. We're still doing one note per string. So we're gonna to bounce to the next string. So we're gonna start on A. I hope you know this is A, E, A, D, G, B, E, two new fourths. So we have A, A sharp, right? B, so that's a whole step. And then from B to C is a half step. So now we know where our next C is. So C, okay, and we have another one right there. So we're gonna go C, C, right? C, C. So then same thing. Metronome on. Feel it out. Don't tap. Don't bob. Don't count. C. C. And you don't have to sing the note. I mean, if you want, you can sing it, but it's not necessary. So, now here's a little trick that I learned. We're going to go to the next string. D, right? Now, we all know what octaves, the shape of octaves are, right? So we have C. That's your, you know, octave right there, and then right there, and then right there. So we're kind of cheating, but we're not. So, you know, that's where your next octave is, C. So we're going to look. Well, this was our last C on this string. We don't have an octave up here, but we're going to do a little Steve Vai visualization here. If you haven't read his 10-hour workout thing, it's pretty cool how he talks about visualizing beyond the fretboard this way and this way. So, C, we don't have that C, but we're gonna pretend we do have that C. Because we're gonna do things, you'll see how we go. So we have, you know, C, 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 and then we're gonna jump to the next C. C, 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 C right? All the metronome, not bobbing your head, not tapping your foot, not counting it out. Always saying the note and don't drag it like that. You want to have it kind of like an archer. So um, in archery, we do aim small, miss small, just like in shooting or anything like that. You aim small, you know the note's gonna go there. I wanna put my arrow right there. I tell it it's going there. Even with the fancy new compound bows that we have and scopes and stuff, I'm literally telling the arrow to go there. Snipers are telling the bullet to go there. So, as you can see, I'm communicating while playing. It's 
help me break down that barrier of communicating. Um, so what we're going to do is, so I hope you get the grasp of, you know, C's, C, and then another C, and then another C, and then another C, and then another C, right? Those are all the C's on the fretboard that I have. I could get my 24 string or 24 fret guitar and, um, you know, go beyond that. I had to learn this on a seven string guitar with 24 frets and that was a tedious task, but it helped even more. So now that we've accomplished C, we're going to move in the circle force. So the circle force is C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B, E, A, D, G. And back to C. Those are all the 12 notes that are playable, not microtonal notes, playable notes on a guitar, piano, bass, violin. So we have C. Those are all done. Now we're going to move to F. Now how do we find F? We already found F earlier. E, F, half step between E and F, and there's your next F, and there's your another F, another F, another F, one more F, another F, another F. Where's this one? That one. We don't have this one. Oh, I screwed up. Another one, another one. All right, those are all your Fs, and then. Once you have that comfortable with the metronome, so we're doing this, you know, C, 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 don't rush, C, I'm rushing, C, 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 then I start at F, I start down here, F, 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 F. F, 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 B flat, B flat, B flat, B flat, B flat. See, you see where I'm getting at? You just cycle through the circle of force. And once you're able to do that comfortably, metronome, slow and steady, then you move on to phase two, which is coming up next. All right, if you have any questions, email me or leave a comment um, and let me know what you need help with and I'll do my best to help you, um, you know, via the interwebs. I'll have diagrams and stuff that I can send you and I'll post in here. So, um, you know, let me know how you, what you think of it and how it's going for you. Bye.